Okay, today I'm going to be making a scientific graph for a report. Um, the things that I've got here are graph paper, I've got my table of results that I took in the experiment, ruler, a couple of pens of different colours, and my calculator. Okay, the first step is ruling up the axes, and I'm going to do that with my ruler, and I'll do that in red pen, but it could be any colour. You always rule on the most outside line of the graph. You never rule one box in. Always on the outermost side of the graph. All the way to the end. I'm just going to add two arrows. That just shows that the data is continuous and usually is continuous when you're making a line graph. So I'm making a line graph today. I'm going to label those X and Y. The next thing we need to do is determine which of our variables are going on which axes. Uh, in this case, our result is from our Hot is Hot experiment. We have the flame uh, type, which was yellow flame and blue flame, and we also have the time that it took to boil and the temperature at which it boiled. Um, so these are the two variables that are going on our axes, time and temperature, and we'll put the two different flames, the yellow flame and the blue flame, as different lines on the graph. Uh, in this case, the two variables that are going on the axes are time and temperature. The dependent variable always goes onto the y-axis. In this case, time is the independent variable, temperature is the dependent variable. So temperature depends on the time. Temperature depends on how long it has been, the water that is, has been on the Bunsen burner. So temperature is the dependent variable, I'm putting that on the y-axis. So I'm writing here temperature. With the units, the units is really important, leaving enough space to put our numbers. And I'm also writing therefore time down here. With the units, minutes, leaving enough space for the numbers to go in. Okay. Next step is to find out the intervals that we'll be using for the axes. Now, it's a pretty simple step. All we need to do is add up for temperature, for example, how many boxes do I have available? And I can see here for this long axis here, I've counted them, I have 40 boxes available, 40 spaces available. And then I need to work out what is my maximum value that I have for the given variable. In this case, it's temperature. So I look up my data, and I can see on my data, the maximum that I have is 99. 99 here, and also 99 for the blue flame. 99 for the yellow, 99 for the blue. Uh, I'm going to make that 100 just to make sure I've got a little bit of space. So what we do is we take our calculator, and the equation is maximum value divided by the available boxes. So the maximum value here is 40, I'm going to divide that by, whoops, sorry, 100, that's from my temperature data, 99, I'm going to make it 100, divided by 40. I'm going to do that calculation on my calculator, 100, divided by 40, equals 2.5. Now 2.5 isn't a real handy unit to go up by on a graph, it gets a little bit confusing, so we round up to the nearest whole number. In this case, I'm going to round up there 4 to 3. So my units are going to be 3 for this graph. So I'm going to put those in now. So I'm starting at 0 for this graph, so I'm going to put 0 in the corner. That means it'll be 0 here for temperature and 0 starting at 0 for time as well. So my first is 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Now my writing's quite big. Uh, so I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm only going to put in every second value so I've got more space to write. I'm still going up by threes, but just skipping every second value. So that would be 21, so I'm going 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, 42, 45, 
58, 52, 51, 54, 57, 60, making sure that we've always got multiples of 3 to know we're on the right track. 66, 69, 72, 75, 78, 81, 84, 87, 90, we're on track. 93, 96, 99, 102, 105, 108, 111, 114, 117, and 120 would be the final value. We've got enough room there, plenty of room to get in 100 degrees and that's what we wanted. Now we need to do that for time which is the value on the x-axis. Same process again. We need to get the maximum value for time and divide that by the available boxes on the x-axis. Now maximum value here goes up to 9 minutes 30 here for the blue flame, 9 minutes, 9 minutes 30 and 9 minutes. Alright, and I've counted already along my x axis that I've got 30 available boxes. So we have 10 minutes is the maximum value. Let's just go up to 10 minutes just to be safe, which equals 600 seconds. We'll do it in seconds, otherwise it gets confusing. Divide that by 30. So 600 seconds divided by 30. Let's do that on our calculator. 600 divided by 30 equals 20. So we could go up by 20 seconds. Mm, again, not a real handy unit to go up by. It makes more sense to go up by, round up, always get rounding up, to 30 seconds. Okay, and that's great because that's the interval that we actually recorded our data in anyway, every 30 seconds. So that fits. I'm going to make it 30 second intervals along this x-axis. So I'm going to start with time zero and again I'm going to skip every second one because I won't have enough time uh, space with my big writing. So 0, 30, 1 minute, 1 minute 30, 2 minutes, 2 minutes 30, 3 minutes, 3 minutes 30, 4 minutes, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and finally 15 minutes. And we've easily got enough room there to fit in our maximum value of 9 minutes 30, so that's not going to be a problem. The next thing we need to do is plot the data. Okay, so we've got our temperature, we've got our time, the intervals are worked out, they've been numbered and now we just need to put the data on. So here's my data. I'll just start with yellow flame. I could start with the blue flame, but I'll start with yellow. I might just use the red pen for yellow just to make it different. And I look at my time zero. Time zero, and it's saying 27 degrees. Zero, 27 degrees. So what I need to do is find where zero intercepts 27 degrees. Zero time intercepts 27 degrees. So I go down here, I see this is zero zero here for time, this is time naught, and I go up to where it meets 27 degrees, here it is, and I put an X. So I've done that first one. Now I move down to the next time interval, 30 seconds, and it says 32 degrees. So, here's 30 seconds, I go up, 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 until it meets 32 degrees for time, for temperature. Across I go, where the two would meet, Imagine if we could draw a line going from 30 seconds up and then from 32 degrees across where they meet is where I would put my dot or in this case I'm just doing an X because I find it a bit easier. Then we look at the next value. One minute the temperature has gone up to 36. So I follow the line straight up for one minute and where that intercepts the line for 36 I put another cross. Now for the time the markings are always going to be on the lines, on these vertical lines. For temperature, it may not be. It, may, it might be in between the lines. Okay, But always you have to stay on the line for the temperature because we know we took our recordings, our observations in the experiment, every 30 seconds. So I'm going to continue on and writing down these values, plotting these values onto the graph. So for 1 minute 30, 
I've got 40.3 degrees and sometimes you have to estimate if that's 39 I know that 40 is going to be just above that for two minutes I've got 45 two minutes 30 five minutes 50.5 degrees two minutes 30 50.5 degrees so it'll be just below 51 for three minutes I've got 54.5 just there 330 59 4 minutes 64 4 minutes 30 69 which is right on the line for 5 minutes I've got 73.5 so about there all the while I'm checking that I'm still on track 5 minutes 30 78 degrees right on the line 6 minutes is 82 6 minutes 30 we've got 86 7 minutes we've got 89 7 minutes 30 we have 92.5 For 8 minutes, we have 95. For 8 minutes 30, we have 97. For 9 minutes, we have 99. And for 9 minutes 30, we also have 99. Okay. Once you finish plotting all the data points, you can connect them all with a line. In this case I'm doing a hand drawn smooth line through the middle of all the points. This is not a line of best fit. This is like connect the dots. I'm connecting the dots. Okay, So there's our completed line for the yellow flame. Now I'm moving on to the blue flame. I'm still looking at my data here. And I'm going to use a different colour pen just to show that we've got a different set of data. Again, I'm starting off at my first observation. Zero is 27 degrees also for the blue flame. So I'm starting at zero, going up to 27. It's actually the same spot for the yellow flame, so I'm putting my cross right on top of it, but that's okay. Okay, for 30 seconds for the blue flame, we have 30 degrees. there at one minute for the blue flame 34 one minute 30 for the blue flame 37.5 two minutes for the blue flame 43.5 starting to catch the yellow flame two minutes 30 48.5 three minutes 54 three minutes 30 59 4 minutes, 64, 4 minutes 30, 64, 69, sorry, 5 minutes, 73, this data is very, very similar, 5 minutes 30, 78, Six minutes, 84. Six minutes, 30. 90. Seven minutes, 93. Seven minutes, 30. 94. Eight minutes, 96. Eight minutes, 30. 98 and then at 9 minutes 99 where it's finished the experiment again I'm going to connect all of those blue lines up with a line of join the dots and it overlaps the red line quite a lot the 
yellow flame. And there, our two lines are finished. Very similar lines. Very similar. Now we need to create a legend, and we just do that in a space uh, that's free of any lines or any data points. So I'm just going to do it here. That is our blue flame. And in the other colour, that is our yellow flame. Finally, before we finish, we need to make a title for this graph. So I'm going to put that at the top. And the title needs to tell the reader something about uh, what happened in the experiment and that they could read this graph independently of looking at the whole report and they could look at this graph and know exactly what it meant. So my title is going to be um, Blue Flame Sorry, Comparing the hot flame and the safety flame of a Bunsen burner for the time and temperature to heat 100 mils of water to boiling point. Long title, yes, but it tells the reader everything that they need to know. They can look at that graph and know everything they need to know about the experiment and they can see that uh, yes, that the blue flame reached boiling point, which in this case was 99 degrees, 30 seconds before the yellow flame. Not much more, but before. And that actually they started at exactly the same temperature, 27 degrees. So we can interpret quite a lot from this graph. You can use this procedure for any uh, line graph that you're making that has continuous data, not just for the Bunsen burner experiment, but any, and you follow these same procedures.